Good morning, everybody. Mike Vaki, PrincetonTrader.com, here with your Tuesday morning pre-market webcast. Okay, first regular trading day of the week. Uh, we had a Globex holiday session yesterday that ran until one o'clock. The volume was non-existent because people, most people were doing what I was doing, which was just, you know, enjoying time with my kids. Um, not much has changed between the video I did yesterday morning and now. If you have not seen yesterday's video, please go watch it because there's two really key concepts we're going to have to deal with this week and how each side reacts to those is going to determine who wins the week. The first concept is this high, this 5675 high that happened about two in the morning on Monday morning in the Sunday, Monday Globex session. Europe loves to steal highs. Okay. The fact that the high is still around is probably just a function of the low volume holiday stuff. Okay. But if it's not, this is a high that has to be respected and at least considered to be maybe the high. It's very difficult, almost impossible to say that with us trading 53. We've been up to 54 a couple of times. Chances are this high gets taken out off the open, maybe marginally, maybe in a big way, which leads me to my next point. If that's not the high, then the bears are at a very significant risk for what's called a secondary band ride. Okay, you've got the upper band sitting there at uh, 59.71. Okay, a secondary band ride is when you do a big old upper band ride. Okay, then you take a day off, two days off at the most. Then you see price reach up and grab the band again and go. That is basically the mother of all short squeezes in an upper band situation, and it's the mother of all flushes in a in a downside situation because you've got this group of people, in this case, top collars and weak shorts and underwater shorts, whatever you want to call them. They are in pain. They've been in pain, okay? They got a little bit of relief from the pain and now in re-engaging the band, whatever patience they had, whatever resiliency they had, whatever plan they had, tends to get lit on fire pretty quick. And as everybody lights their plan on fire, Everybody covers and price really gets going. A secondary band ride in this scenario, it's very difficult if we get into a secondary band ride. So that would be re-engaging the band for you know multiple days. It'd be very difficult not to see 2,400 in a secondary band ride. Now the bulls have to execute that. But I say that to you, not as some kind of a prediction, but I say that to you because if they go up and grab that band and they hold it, you need to respect risk if you're short or you may get dragged behind the bus all the way to 2,400. And I don't think that's pain that anybody wants. That's how, that, that's how to blow your account up. What you need to be doing in that situation is figuring out ways to get long. Because in any band ride, and what we've seen in every day of this band ride, there are dips, there are areas that hold, like the hourly, like the mid band on the hourly chart, that you can use as opportunities to get long, be with the trend, and make money while the market goes up. You can be short or you can make money. I mean, that was the whole mantra of the upper band ride. You can be short or you can make money. The choice is yours. Okay? It's hard to get long upper band rides. It's hard to get long short of highs. But it pays. Okay? But as we head into today, we have to figure out, does that Europe high mean anything? Are they going to go grab the band? If we pull back, let's look at the hourly chart. If we pull back, I got the weekly pivot here at 3760. You've got two looks in, in the 36 area that were important last week, Thursday and Friday of last week. So you've got a lot of congestion, 3637. If it were to pull back in a meaningful way, I would expect in the first trip down that the weekly pivot is going to be support. The question becomes, if it bounces off weekly pivot, how high does it bounce? You've got 49.50 acting as support uh, in the holiday session and today. So that would be the first order of business on any move down. They got to get through 49. If they get through 49, they can see the weekly pivot. Maybe not today, maybe tomorrow. But if they do, if you bounce back up, then that 49.50 area has got to hold as resistance. And if it doesn't, they're just going to lay down again. Okay. Now, as always, I'm looking at the mid band here on this hourly chart. It's been crisscrossing it all night. The bands are fairly tight. 
So I expect to get a decent directional move this morning one way or the other. Now, if if that is in favor of the bulls, you hop up to 60, you're going to engage that upper band. And if you're short, you need to respect risk. You need to come up with a line in the sand and respect it. If the break is down, I think there's enough fuel to at least go down and um, and test the, uh, the, the daily pivot. This is the daily pivot. This is not the daily pivot. This is the daily pivot based upon Friday's numbers. So you got a daily pivot at 44 half. I don't know, it does this because Thinkorswim can't figure out when it's a holiday session. It literally can't. So this is your daily pivot at 45, below that is 37. So on a break of 49, you gotta look at 44 half, then you gotta look at 37 half. All right, everybody have a fantastic day. Back with a mid-morning uh, video. See you then. Follow us on Twitter, at Princeton Trader. Come check out our website, PrincetonTrader.com, and come take a free trial in our chat room. I'll be back tomorrow morning with another webcast. Trade them well, everybody.